What's up to all my Cinema 4D users out there? Mocap and hair simulation have always been a perfect pairing in C4D, so in today's tutorial, we're going to cover our favorite hair settings, specifically length, clump, and color. With a few simple tweaks, you can get an awesome result in very little time. We've also posted a companion video where we create three separate hair looks using Rococo motion capture assets, so make sure to check that out. Okay, let's jump right into it. The first thing we'll need is some mocap. So besides the terrible dancing, when recording for dynamic simulations like hair, I generally try not to move too fast, and I also try to make sure I don't have any body collisions that could mess up the simulation later. Mostly that means keeping my arms away from my body. Let's export out an FBX. I actually like working in 30 FPS for hair because it gives you a few more frames of motion. Okay, let's jump into Cinema 4D. First thing we'll do is import our mocap. So instead of retargeting this mocap onto a actual rigged character, I'm going to use the standard figure from Cinema 4D. If you want to use a character, we have tons of tutorials on retargeting your mocap onto your character's skeleton properly. You can check those out on our channel. To use this standard figure, first I'm going to make it editable by hitting C. Then I will select children and then I will hit connect objects and delete. Doing all this will leave me with a single mesh that I can then bind to our animation. I'll hit select children on my animation to select all the joints in the joint chain, and then I will control click my mesh, and then we'll go to character bind. Now if we hit play, we have everything completely ready for our hair. So when I'm adding hair, sometimes there are parts on my mesh that I don't want to have hair, like the bottom of our character's feet. So I will select our character, then hit faces, then select the bottom of our character's feet. Then I'll hit U and then I to invert our selection. Finally, I'll add our hair by going to simulate hair objects add hair, and the hair will only be added to our selection and not to the bottom of our character's feet. So there are a few things we'll do just to prep our scene and our hair. Let's add a floor. I'm just gonna add a plane, and then add a hair collider to that plane. I'll also add a hair collider to our character's mesh, and then select hair to surface under forces. Finally, I will shorten the length of our guides so that we can kind of see what's going on more. Okay, let's hit play. So the first thing that we'll want to fix is this jump from our T-pose to our animation. When you export out of Rococo Studio, your animation will always start in a T-pose and we want to just start straight on the dancing. So I will add a motion clip to the animation hips and then I will click that motion clip and open up the timeline and shift our animation forward slightly. Now our character will start dancing on frame one. Next, we can see that all of our hairs are being generated from the vertices of our mesh. Instead, I'll select polygon area and then I'll hit reroute. Now we have an even random distribution of hairs all over our character, which I think is better than just the uniform distribution of hairs on the vertices. With that done, we're ready to get into the hair settings themselves. I found that there are three main hair settings in Cinema 4D that I always rely on, even if I make tweaks beyond them. Those are length, clump, and finally hair color. I normally work through them in that sequence as well, so let's start with length. I'm also going to start my Octane render. All of this will work with the physical renderer, and it should work with Redshift as well, but I just happen to use Octane. I will open up my hair material, and then I will enable length. Right off the bat, nothing happens. However, I'm going to add a noise texture, and immediately you can see a big change. Some of our hairs are now longer than the others, which is a much more natural look. And more important than that, it, I think it just looks a little bit cooler to have some randomness in your hair. If we click on our noise, we can jump down a level and, and get some more control. If we're losing too much length from our hair, we can always bring some of that length back by lowering the high clip. You can also get different looks by changing the noise type and the global scale. I'm actually going to leave these at default though. I usually find that adding a noise is perfect to get me a little more detail on the length. 
Next up, clumping. Let's enable it. And again, we won't see a huge difference right off the bat. Enabling clump basically means that you'll get these little clumps of hair on your character, which can give you a much more textured look. I don't really like it personally when the hair looks really, really silky. And by adding a clump, you can add a little bit more detail. I usually use something like 30% for the count, 30% for the clump, and then a variation of about 30%. You can change these numbers to your liking though. As you can see, we already have a far more interesting looking hair sim. You can also play with the other settings like twist to refine the look further. Finally, let's go over color. A really easy way to add super interesting color to your hair is to add a noise into the texture and then add a colorizer on top of that noise. So now our color is being driven by a noise pattern. If we click into the colorizer, we can load in these really great color presets that come with Cinema 4D. These are useful across a bunch of different types of projects. We can play around with all the different types. And once we have a color scheme that we like, we can actually dive into our noise texture. I usually use electric for the noise with hair because it has this really great layered hair vibe to the noise. If you want something that isn't as crazy, you can kick up the global scale and get a more gradual gradient for the color. So now if I go back up a level to our colorizer, I can keep playing with the color until I get something that I like. When we have our final color, generally I'll create another material with that same shader copied into the diffuse category so that I can apply that to my character in case the hair, in case you can see past the hair to the character or to the environment itself. It's just nice to have the same hair color available for objects in your scene. So those are the main settings that I'll use in pretty much every hair simulation I do. Even if I'm going to tweak that hair simulation beyond just these settings, I will still always use these settings. But if we want to add some extra awesome, there are a few more things that we can do. First, I don't want the hair to fall into place when I start the simulation. I just want the hair to lie flat on the frame one. So I'll run our simulation for a few frames, and then I will go to simulate, hair edit, set initial state. Now on frame one, our hair will have this position. Next, I'll go to our guides and set our segments to 12. The higher we make this, the more flexible our hair will be, which is more realistic, but it also increases processing time. The last thing I usually do is make each individual hair a lot thinner. My go-to settings are 0.1 for the root and 0.05 for the tip. Then I'll add a lot more hairs. In this case, I'm going to change it from 50,000 to 100,000. Changing the amount of hairs that you have, as well as the segments for the guides and the thinness or thickness of the hair can really make your computer chug. So make sure to save and also try to find a good balance between killing your machine and still getting an awesome result. So there you go. Those are our favorite hair settings for mocap in Cinema 4D. We have also released a short companion video to this where I run through how to create three different hair looks using mocap animations from the Rococo Motion Library, our motion capture marketplace. I'm also giving away this little character that I made who I think can be really fun when you're doing hair simulations. This character was inspired from the Mankind tutorial, which we'll have a link to as well in the description below. We hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave any questions in the comments below or always feel free to reach out to us directly at support at rococo.com. Thanks everyone. Make sure to check out our other hair video that we, we released with this and keep having fun creating awesome hair simulations out there. Thanks everyone.